Imagine a purple octopus or giant muscles as big as your arm. Local scientists have found at least five new deep sea animals living on our ocean floor. Ian Wallace reports that an unusual alliance may protect the newest deep sea animals living on oil and gas fields. Deep in the Caribbean Sea, beyond where the sun's rays can reach, the seafloor comes to life. Wow, yeah, that's, a big, that's bigger than the ones you usually see, isn't it? A creepy ghost white shark was found by an international team of scientists near the Kickham Jenny underwater volcano in Grenada. Locals Diva Amon and Judith Gobin were present for deep sea discoveries in Grenada, using the remote submersible and also made stunning discoveries in local waters. Nearly two kilometers below the Atlantic Ocean, they unexpectedly found 83 species of deep sea animals. Many had never been recorded in local waters. Like this eel pout fish southeast of Tobago. A purple octopus surrounded by sponges both thought to be new species. Three foot long tube worms, snails, anemones, foot long shrimp, giant mussels as long as your arm. Deep sea biologist Diva Amon and marine biologist Judith Gobin believe these deep sea animals live for centuries. Animals that live down there are perfectly adapted to living in this environment and thriving down there. But these uh, characteristics mean that life is slow, really slow. Mm -hmm. Animals take a long time to grow to maturity. They um, can live for very, very long ages. Some of the chew worms we found at our sites can, we think, live for thousands of years. At least five species new to science were found thriving along fractures in the sea floor where methane gas bubbles through cracks called cold seeps. Methane appears as snow, frozen in cold water of just 2 degrees Celsius due to the enormous pressure of the deep ocean above. That is too cool. It's like, like a snow cone. It is. Yeah, it really is. Over 80 sites found south of Tobago and east of Trinidad represent quite a find. This is a huge untapped resource and it's almost pristine and so we're hoping that we can sort of start from the top and basically begin to put in place the legislation we need to manage it as best we can, to try and keep it as pristine as we can. Fisher folk derive their livelihood from the shallow and the deep sea. And with the new discoveries off the coast of Trinidad and Tobago, especially in the oil and gas regions, stewardship will be the major concern for scientists moving forward. Scientists hope to get energy companies on board to further map life on the seafloor and possibly create safe havens for deep sea habitats. That's really the way we can do it, if we partner with these companies. Let's face it, we do have vessels that are exploring the east coast mm -hmm. every single day. There are seismic surveys going on by, with the multinational um, companies. We would like to get some ship time on board to help us to continue with this research. And as Diva mentioned earlier, it's really all about stewardship. It's the management, the balancing of how we use it. UWI marine biologist Judith Gobin says energy and petrochemical company Shell has helped UWI and Nehurst make DVDs for schools to learn more about the newest deep sea animals living on these methane gas vents. We are certainly going to be pushing this agenda towards protection of what we have begun to see and really this is just the beginning. For the CNMG Environment Report, I am Ian Wallace.